so in this under 40 minutes video i'm going to be showing you how to create this cool animation for a luxury brand i'm going to be taking you through animation the lighting process and also the shading from scratch in blender and we're going to be going through the after effects process of the grading and the edits you can follow through with this video as a beginner but i recommend you already knowing the basic navigation of the blender ui i've already prepared this starter blend file for you link down below so you can download that from my gumroad page all right let's head on to the particles all right we want um some glittering balls falling from around here onto this log of wood and we are we want this log of wood actually acting as an effect to a collider to to bounce the particles off and this flux so to be to actually receive the particles so let's set that up we we're going to be using the normal blender particle system let's create a cube that will be our domain let's scale that up so let's go to front of the graphic and we, we click five on your notepad and one let's go to wireframe mode um z and wireframe let's position this up and let's go to the right three and actually we want the domain to cover the whole scene the whole scene at least the whole visible scene let's increase this and scale this up right here because the emitter object will somewhere be here will be be somewhere here let's move this up let's see how that looks like and now let's scale it on the x-axis all right looks good now let's change the visibility of this domain to wire so we can see the we can see what we're doing perfect let's just scale this on the y-axis and move this on here all right now let's create the emitter object so the emitter objects will just basically be uh, a sphere a sphere let's move this up scale this up a bit and we scale it on the y-axis and shade smooth will basically be a sphere let's rotate this a bit because we want it pouring from here onto this place all right let's scale it a bit go to into top orthographic to see what we're doing so we need it to be around here let's scale it a bit all right and the height should be around somewhere here perfect all right now let's enter a domain and head on to the properties and we're going to be using a fluid object actually fluid and change this to domain now we're going to be changing the domain type to liquid so that's going to block out everywhere now let's change the, the, the resolution i'm going to give you because i've finished with the settings and i'm going to give you the settings outrightly so let's change the resolution division to 60 we change the time scale to one but to get this the slow effect in this shot we will need to animate the time scale but we get to that um now the cfl number will remain the same and now let's head over to the liquid settings we change simulation type to arc we change leave the particle radius at one and we change the randomness to 10. now the particle maximum is left at 16 and the particle minimum at eight and uh, narrow bandwidth at three that should be okay now let's turn on diffusion because with the fluid setting the normal fluid setting will give us just the, the fluids why diffusion will give us a kind of green sand grain look we're going for now we turn on the diffusion and this at one let's change the exponent to two and surface tension we left at zero all right now let's get let's go to the viewport display and change this to um zero point around 0 0.07 We'll see why we need that later around 0 0.07 so now our simulation time should be around 250 yeah and let's change the type to all and left it's good at open vdb now for our inflow let's work on our inflow now we 
select the fluid fluid type and change this to flow change the flow type to liquid and in flow because we need this to be continuously running now let's change the sub sample subsets to one now we work with let's select this set set to effector and collision also one and the ground also or the ground is fine actually because the domain actually stops at the ground level now let's simulate and see what we have all right now we have our you can see actually simulates nicely very nice actually so we can see the the simulation actually went nice let's play that so it looks like sand and the rest perfect now to actually create that um shiny ball we have to use the geometry nodes now we can change this to geometry node editor all right so particle simulation is done and what we're going to be using to create those balls to turn the particle this tiny particle to balls is um using a vertex a single vertex we're going to be applying the geometry node on so to make sure we have to make sure our cursor is in the center we shift select, um create a new plane shift a and we select one of the vertices click ctrl i and delete vertices ctrl i select and delete vertices now we have this now let's go to let's center our origin on this vertex object set origin 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 to geometry and press alt g that will bring it to the center of to the world center now let's rename this to the geometry geometry balls All right, now let's create a new geo system for this new. All right, all right. So as we create the new geometry nodes, what we have to do is go over to the modifiers tab and add a new modifier, particle instance. Yes, right here, and we move this on top, and now we select the domain as. The object which is this cube let's rena quick rename that domain and we select the geometry balls and select the domain as the object all right now let's go over let's go back to the geo nodes new geo node system sorry geo nodes yes this system and now let's work on the balls now we shift a bring in a mesh to points node mesh to points and we plug that in now let's bring in a random value a random value and a divide and a math node set to divide so this will actually control this random value actually control the minimum and the maximum size of the ball so minimum size to one and maximum size to two and we're going to be dividing that by um we're going to be dividing that by say 70. <coughs> going to plug the value right here and plug this to the radius all right <coughs> We can't really see that we can see that this is outside the scale so what we have to do is actually apply the scale to these geometry balls Control a apply scale now we can see the balls we have this this nice looking balls right here in our viewports so with this we can actually turn off the domain and we'll have our particles falling and interacting with environments like so all right now let's go into the shading now we can select this and create a set material set material and now let's work on the material we can create the material using the m uh, the flow objects we select the flow objects and select new 
we create a new material new to and set this to glossy ball because we want this to be glossy let's set let's say glossy emissive emissive all right now let's select the particles back and 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 select glossy emissive the materials we just worked on all right now all set let's file the render view and, and look at this because we can see that the particles are actually showing up in the viewports nice all right now let's work on the particles glossy emissive changes back to shader editor and so what i did is to actually let's go into the rendered view to see what we're doing what i actually did was decrease the roughness and increase the metallic so that'll give us this shiny look now to give it the emissive look what we have to do is create like an outer ring of emission around these balls so what we have to do is head on to shift a and select a layer weight node with a color ramp so we connect the fresnel into the factor and the color out to the emission so we can see what's happening now let's let's dial this in or instead let's use the facing actually so that will create this look so we can actually control how much of an outer ring of emission we want to have now with this we can actually select this color or a pinkish look to it you can see that so that gives us that pinkish emission and now since we'll be having our camera shots from here why not we have a light in in here to see to to indicate that the particles flowing through the and hitting the wood to create this sort of effect now we can select let's select the log of wood press shift s selection cursor to selected and now let's create a point light the point light will work well and increase the radius a bit with the power up and with a similar color to the outer ring of those balls now let's actually increase it a bit and the radius too and increase this a much all right nice now let's create our camera a camera um camera and a quick shortcut to actually position the camera to the viewer looking at is control alt zero so that will give you the look the the that will snap the camera to your viewport present look now let's go to the camera and focal length is at 100 focus is at focal length is at 100 and now let's delete this keyframe focal length is 100 let's pull this back a bit so to easily navigate the camera you can select n go into view and select camera to view now you can literally position the camera however you like in your viewports all right this should work all right now we turn this off and hit the rendered view now to create this sort of depth that was shown in the shot we can actually use an empty to control the depth of field now with the cursor still selected still attached to the wood let's create an empty empty arrow so the arrow is let's have the depth of field looking at like somewhere here somewhere here yes and we go back to our camera select the camera and enable depth of field now the focus object will be our empty now let's reduce this f-stop a tad and see what we're working with um let's push this back let's push this back and increase the focal length to get a, sh a more shallow depth of field so let's play around with the 
so we're playing around with the depth of field so we can see we have this depth of field this nice depth of field going on right here i see this nice depth of field going on right here okay, actually let's still center this camera up so yeah we can see this nice nice depth of field so you want this for separate shots we can also still increase the the light setup right here also increase the power say 500 or 600 and increase the radius too all right now if you want this type of shot you you probably have to want to play with your lighting and probably reduce this for a different shot and adjust your lighting to have it however you please all right all right so we can see that shallow depth of field look all right now let's head on to the last shots 